Peace, Soul Tribe. This is Aya Samadhi. First of all, thank you so much to Nadia Shah for having me on her channel. I greatly appreciate it. And I'm going to be telling you guys a story today. And we're going to speak about it from an astrological perspective. But I am going to tell the story first. So this story is called The Resilient One. Let's get into it. There once was a young boy named Ethan, and Ethan was always a very intrigued and curious young boy. Um, ever since he was able to speak, ever since he was able to walk, he was always a type of guy that wanted to take things apart and kind of dissect things and really get to the bottom of it and discover like, who made this toy? Where did this toy come from? What does this piece do? And what does that do? And what, what, what happens if I do this to this toy? He was very much the type of person that wanted to dissect everything and get to the bottom of everything. And he was very curious, very intrigued, you know, throughout his life. Um, early on though, his parents divorced when he was five and um ethan you know he really that really took a toll on him when his when his parents divorced and unfortunately his father um was absent after the age of five his parents divorced and his father abandoned him and he didn't hear from his father ever again after that and that um that scarred him it, it really scarred him in a way that um he basically he took it to heart and he felt as though he was unloved and he dealt with a lot of pain you know due to that and not only that but he witnessed abuse early on in the home between his mother and father and he witnessed his father abuse his mother physically and that is why the divorce happened. So early on, very early on, he had to experience some type of trauma um, within his life. And um, as he got older, he realized that he just even wasn't like everyone else. He was very different. Um, he was very different, but he was also very quiet into himself. He was not so much a very outgoing person, Ethan. He liked to um, be by himself. He, he did enjoy the company of others, and he greatly longed for a relationship with another person. He definitely had that desire to gain um, an intimate relationship with another person, especially as he got older and went into high school. He really wanted to date a girl. Um, when he was about 13 or 14 years old, he had an uncle that passed away and that really took a toll on Ethan um, because he, him and his uncle, they were very close. And when his uncle passed away, his uncle passed away very suddenly. It was very unexpected. And, you know, he just, he didn't necessarily know how to react because his uncle was actually murdered. And so um, this actually intrigued him and it made him study death. He became really, really obsessed with death. He started buying all these books on death. He started researching, you know, what happens after you die? Do we have a soul? Do we have a spirit? You know, things of that sort. And he really started to become very interested in the mysteries of life. And as I spoke on earlier, when he was in high school, he really had this, um, deep desire to gain a relationship with a person so he started dating this girl and they were going out and you know it was very nice it was very passionate he would write her letters love letters and everything and um he felt good about this girl he felt like she was the one he felt like she was the one and it was just so passionate and so intense and it was just um very very loving relationship um 
but she unfortunately cheated on Ethan and that broke his heart and he just felt the ultimate betrayal from her and so after that he felt very scarred and he dealt with a lot of pain he was already dealing with you know his uncle being murdered and not only that but his relationship with his mom was not the best his mom was very emotionally intense towards him and would make him feel negatively about himself emotionally and mentally so he dealt with a lot of psychological stuff Ethan did and one thing that he learned was that pain was just a part of his life and experiencing darkness was just a part of his life and that is something that he just had to undergo so within that he realized that he needed to turn his pain into power that's what he realized and when he realized that he started to then go on this spiritual journey and he started reading all of these books he came across he was in the library one day and he came across this book um called siddhartha which was about uh buddhism and he started reading it and it really it intrigued him and he he really started to adapt some of the things that were being spoken on in the book and so because he got inspired from the book he then wanted to start traveling and start going and doing all of these spiritual things like fasting and traveling to different countries and meeting new people and because he had already gone through all of these painful experiences and then he discovered spirituality he literally was able to turn his pain into power and transform and he then became this super optimistic person and very inspirational person towards others and he began to preach he be he became a preacher and he started preaching towards others and he just became an inspiration and people went to him people came to him people considered him ethan a guru they really said ethan you helped me so much and you've done so much for me and you know we we look up to you we look up to you we thank you and ethan was able to inspire very very many people with his words and with his voice and with his teachings he became a teacher he became a preacher he became someone that would travel all over the world and talk about the type of things that he had to endure early on in childhood and how he overcame those things and was able to turn his pain into power and gain wisdom from those experiences and so after that gaining all of that wisdom and traveling and you know really becoming a beacon of light he then was able to put his wisdom into work and build a legacy and so after that he ended up getting married he ended up finding the woman of his dreams he ended up getting a lot of public recognition he got a lot of public recognition his names were in, his name was in the newspaper he was in magazines he was on television he was just getting recognized by a lot of very important people and he loved this he loved this because he was able to build a legacy and then he had children and his legacy extended on to them as well and ethan's name went down in history and people remembered him forever people remembered ethan as the resilient one people remembered him as one that was basically um the phoenix and someone that was able to turn his pain into power, gain wisdom, and then build a legacy. And that is the story of the resilient one. In other words, that is also the story of the Scorpio, the Sagittarius, and the Capricorn. These three signs are very, very important. All, all 12 signs are very important, but the story between the Scorpio, the Sagittarius, and the Capricorn is extremely essential. 
um, I feel for everyone to know because it's a very inspiring story. Many of us go through challenging and painful experiences and um, we often don't know how are we going to transform and be able to rise above those challenges. And when you think about that story between Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Capricorn, it's definitely a good blueprint to understand that. Now, Scorpio is the eighth sign of the zodiac. It rules the eighth house. That means that it, the eighth house is all about sudden ups and downs and sudden changes. You know, the eighth house is um, also the house of the occult and mysteries of life. And so this is why early on in life, Ethan was very interested in those things. He, he became interested in death. He became interested in how does he dissect things. Remember I was talking about him, you know, taking a toy apart and really trying to understand it. That is very much of a Scorpio-like things to do because they like to get to the bottom of things. They like to dissect things. Scorpio wants to understand. They're very curious. They rule psychology. So they like to understand the psychology of things. Now, Scorpio is also ruled by the planet Pluto, and Pluto has to do with death, rebirth, and transformation. And so Pluto says, in order for me to transform, in order for me to transform any area of your life, something has to die. Something has to die in order for it to be reborn and in order for it to transform. And with a lesson with Scorpio, it's that you can go through these painful experiences and you can go through this death, essentially. And it doesn't always have to be literally, but you can go through these experiences of death and you can be reborn again and you can transform from those experiences. And Pluto has a lot to do with trauma also. And this is why Ethan had to undergo trauma early on in life. But within that, he was able to turn his pain into power. And that is the lesson of Scorpio. Now, after we transition from Scorpio, we get to Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is the ninth sign of the Zodiac and also rules Jupiter, is ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter is all about expansion jupiter is about spirituality jupiter is about optimism jupiter is about um our beliefs right and the ninth house is about long distance travel it is about higher education and higher knowledge and wisdom sagittarius is the sign of wisdom sagittarius is the preacher of the zodiac sagittarius is the guru and so this is why ethan after undergoing these painful experiences as the scorpio when we're speaking in Scorpio energy, he's able to then become a guru and gain wisdom from those painful experiences. And when we think about Sagittarius, what is Sagittarius's 12th house? The 12th house of Sagittarius is Scorpio. And what is the 12th house? The 12th house has to do with our subconscious mind. It has to do with the things that are hidden from ourselves, um, that are hidden from others, the side of ourselves that we don't really show to others. So this means that deep down inside, Sagittarius has that Scorpio energy within them. Um, and this is, this is that transition between Scorpio and Sagittarius that I'm talking about. And so this is why Ethan was able to travel the world and he was able to inspire others and preach and become a spiritual guru and become a preacher. That's that transition between Scorpio and Sagittarius. After Sagittarius, what do we have? We have Capricorn. Capricorn rules the 10th house and it rules the career. Within astrology, it, rules, it is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is all about work. Saturn is about your work ethic. It's about structure. And Capricorn is an earth sign, which means it is about bringing things into the physical plane. And the 10th house is the house of our legacy. It is a house of our reputation. And so this is why Ethan, after undergoing the trauma the pain turning the pain into power and gaining the wisdom from Sagittarius he was then able to put that into fruition make that concrete build a legacy put his wisdom into work make his wisdom work for him build a legacy and 
this helped his reputation. He was in magazines. He was in the newspaper. He was on television. Capricorn is the house, rules the house of fame. It rules your reputation. It rules your legacy. So that is what Ethan was able to build for himself. And that is pretty much it. I really hope that you all were able to gain something from that story. It is something that I thought about personally and something that I wanted to share with others. And that is the story of the resilient one. And for those that don't know, Ethan actually is a Hebrew name and it means strong. It means resilient. So that's why I chose the name Ethan to tell the story. But I hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you again to Nadia Shah for having me. Peace.